So hopefully you're here for iterators. Uh, I'm Jake Smith. Uh, I'm a software engineer at Mastery, an API management company, uh, co-organizer of uh, Dallas PHP. Uh, contact information. I'll have some at the end also. But um, so all the links that you'll see at the bottom of a lot of my slides, any kind of resources that are relevant to the topic, I have uh, placed in this Bitly bundle. So you can just write this down so you don't have to be constantly trying to write down every resource I mention or talk about. I'll give everyone just a second to get that. Almost there. And he's got it. And another link for you. Uh, this is the join in link. So uh, any kind of feedback that you have on this talk would be much appreciated. So be sure to go and rate my talk afterwards. Go and rate all the talks you've attended. You know, the feedback is very important. It only makes us better. So I, I usually like to have just a random wiki definition of what something is. And, you know, it just has to be there. So this is actually what Wikipedia defines an iterator as. An object that enables a programmer to traverse a container. That's really all it is. A quote I, I, I got from a blog post 2010, I think it was. Uh, Fabian, uh, the lead developer of Symphony. Or he, uh, he had made this to me. PHP also have a lot of awesome features. At least two of them they are, in my opinion, largely underused. Iterators and streams. And this really stuck out to me because once I actually dove in to iterators, I realized that how powerful they really were and how underutilized they were. And realized we actually use objects that implement iterator all the time. So I have this slide up. Um, because I'm going to say the word iterator a lot today. Like so much that it's just, you're going to just, all you're going to hear is iterator, 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 iterator. So we have the iterator drinking game. So every time I say iterator, you take a drink. One iterator, two iterator, three iterator, four. So fun little drink game. So uh, where are iterators used? So this is actually a link to the, uh, to the PHP source for iterators, which if you've never actually dug into the source of some of the things that you're, you've worked on in PHP, there is so much great information and examples that can help guide you on how to use a lot of things. So I always like to kind of present this, uh, this link so people can find that. Once again, it's in the Bitly bundle, so no rushes. So how many people have used simple XML? How many people have used PDO? How many people like raising their hands in presentations? All right. So I mean, all, so all of these, uh, the results are returned as uh, an iterator. You can do a for each over a simple XML result, uh, a PDO result. That's implementing an iterator. So uh, this code right here, I was like, I'm, I was interested. I'm like, how many classes in PHP actually implement iterator? How, how prevalent is it? So I, I just wrote this real quick using an iterator. To, uh, to filter out and find how many classes actually implement traversable. And this is a list from, I think, 5.3. I, don't, I haven't even updated it for 5.5. 5. So there's even more classes applied here. So obviously, there's a good chance you've used an iterator and didn't even realize that's what you were using. So defining an iterator. So I, I wanted to just kind of quickly just run through some of the, some of the interfaces so you have an understanding of what these methods are that are required to actually build your own iterator. So we have an uh, iterator right here. You have a current key, next, rewind, and valid. So current's always going to return you the current value. Key is pretty obvious. Next moves you to the next, uh, moves the cursor, and rewind takes you back to the beginning. And then valid is just validating, hey, uh, are, you know, are we at the end? Is this still valid? Or, oh, there's still more to go. Keep going. That's essentially what it is. And these are all the uh, methods that you have to implement to actually create your own iterator. So one of the biggest benefits, at least to me, when using iterators is recursive iterator. How many people just, how many people love recursion? Yeah, it, it, if you screw up recursion, it gets really messy really quick. And so I think using the recursive iterators is a huge benefit and really easy. So. 
the only two methods that you have to add for recursive error are get children and has children. Pretty obvious what they're doing. Does this element that I'm on, does it have any children? If so, get me the children. So countable. So let's say you want to use the, uh, the, the PHP function count. Well, unless you actually implement countable, you can't do that. You would have to use a special function called iterator count. That's kind of annoying. We, want, we don't really care. We just, you know, I want to just count this array, or I want to count this iterator. I don't want to have to check to make sure it's an iterator, then do iterator count. So if you implement countable, you can actually uh, return what the count is for the iterator you're working with. So it's very important, at least to me, that you use countable. And then seekable iterator. So this interface allows you to, you know, send it a key and say, hey, take me to this specific element in this uh, iterator. And I know you can't see this, but this is, I want to say, the bare basics of creating your own iterator. Now, that is a lot of methods for just doing, you know, just creating a simple iterator, but like I said, we'll go through and you'll learn some of the easier ways to handle this. So let's go through some iterator basics, some things you're going to run into, some terms you're going to run into. So an iterator aggregate. So the, the best way to describe this is it's used when you need to offload the iteration to something else. So it has a method get iterator. So let's say I have this, this uh, iterator I want to run over, but you saw those methods we had to create. Well, I mean, that's, that's like making my class even larger. I don't want all that stuff there. So what you can do is you can actually have the get iterator method, and it can return an iterator, and that is what's used to run all that stuff. And you can kind of just kind of separate it out. So your iterator aggregate is a container for your, your iterator. So the iterate, iterator, 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 uh, rotates in the, as you uh, iterate over your iterator aggregate. Oh, no, there's a lot more iterators. Get, get ready. So just read this one. I like reading this. I know you're supposed to read the text, but I just... I just love it so much because there's so many iterators. Outer iterators act as a wrapper layer. Outer iterator is iterated, then internally iterates over inner iterator. Iterator, iterator. Everybody on the same page? OK, that's what I thought. So essentially, uh, it's, it's, it's a wrapper. The, both these the iterators are rotating essentially at the same time. I like to think of it more of like, a, uh, uh, like the insides of a watch or something. They're both like rotating at the same time. Like I said, uh, we have. I have plenty of code examples later on, so this will make a little more sense. If I just sat up here and didn't show you any code, none of us would have a clue what we're talking about, except that we're talking about iterators. So uh, recursive iterator. This is, this is probably the number one thing that screws people up, I think, when they get into iterators, is recursive iterator, you're like, OK, I'm going to create a recursive iterator. Problem is, recursive iterator only sets up your iterator to be recursively iterated. Yes, exactly. What? So if I actually did a for each on a recursive iterator, it wouldn't recursively iterate. All we're doing is setting it up with the get children and has children methods. So once again, we will, it will infinitely go there. So iterator, iterator, iterator. Iterate. So just a, just a note, uh, if you uh, use for each with iterator, it will auto rewind. If you're using a for or a while, you need to make sure that you actually re rewind the iterator itself. That's just kind of a little side note. All right, on to recursive iterators. So th this is my uh, example data. So I have uh, a post with, uh, with a title, email, title, email. So I have my recursive array iterator. We're doing a for each over. But you see down, well, maybe some of you might not be able to see. Down here, the, uh, the return from the post, is it, it just says the word array. That's not what we were expecting. So this, this is where we introduce the uh, recursive iterator iterator. The names are wonderful, aren't they? Yeah. So this is what you actually use to uh, iterate over a recursive iterator. So, um, I want to just briefly talk about some of these constants here. So uh, the default is leaves only. So that's only the children will actually be uh, it, like outputted. The, uh, the parent key will not show up in that for each. But you can set it to self first, and it'll output the parent 
and then all the children. Children first, output all the children, then the parent. Once again, there, there's an example that'll show how that's really helpful. So we do the same thing now, but we actually wrap it in the recursive iterator, iterator, and we get our title email, title email from the post array that we had before. So now it's actually outputting what we were expecting. It's not just going to say array. And that's how, and like this could indefinitely go. You could have uh, forever amounts of nesting, and it would hit them all. So um, one thing I, uh, I created using a recursive iterator, iterator is I created a, uh, a menu. Like a, I wanted to be able to just generate a menu anytime. So right here we have home page, registers. It's like a normal navigation you'd have on a, on a site. So I went ahead and created my own hook recursive iterator iterator. So there's two methods I, 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 that don't really get talked about much called uh, begin children and end children. And what these, these are hooks. They don't actually do anything right now, but they get run all the time. But it makes it easy for me to actually wrap things. So whenever I have like a children, I want to have a sub menu. So I'm just gonna output uh, a UL. And when I'm done, I want to output a ULLI. This is the way I set up this menu, once again. HTML, set however you want. So by uh, doing this right here, I was able to just output an entire HTML menu just based off of just that array I showed. Once again, I did self first because I wanted the parent to show up in the actual menu itself and then all the children as a sub menu. So that's something I like to do with the uh, recursive iterator, iterator. Something that might be a little more common for other people is I have a cache folder and I, need to do, I just need to clear it all out real quick. Well, right here, we go back to that child first. You've got to delete the children first before you actually delete the directory itself. So I can have my recursive iterator, iterator. You're going over a recursive directory iterator. So right here, I do an array map with unlinked. So I'm going to just delete all these cache files. And then we have this thing right here called iterator to array. So this is one of the most frustrating things, I think. Well, there's plenty of frustrating things, but this is one of them. So you can, for each of an iterator, you can run certain functions on it, but I, I can't do an array map I, because it's an iterator, it's not an array. So you have to run iterator to array to convert it down to an array. So even though in, in the for each loop it's treated like an array, it's not an array. So we convert this iterator to an array, and then I'm array mapping it. So I'm saying I want you to delete every file in the directory, all the files, directory. And this can, you know, you can have 20,000 folders deep. This is going to hit all of them and clear it out for you. So directory iterator. So this is one of the... Uh, Probably, if there's anything you walk away with today, this is probably one of the things you really need to listen to. So how many people, if you wanted to list out some files from a directory, do it this way? That's just the way you've done it forever. That's the way. It, so I did a Google search, like, this morning or last night. And I was like, huh, uh, let me just do a search for list files directory PHP. First thing that popped up, scan dir. Next thing, Stack Overflow example that I pasted right here. First two pages, I didn't find anything that even mentioned a directory iterator. So all that can be simple, uh, simply gone down to directory iterator in the directory. That, that's it. Then I can just start going. On. And it returns me an SPL file info. So I can actually, on that file, I have so many options, so many things I can easily grab you know, this one line, that's all I need to do. And I could actually get all the files for that directory. So, I mean, doesn't that seem a lot easier than having to do all that? We move, we move from that to this. But like I said, nobody really hears about the directory iterator. So I'm here to, to get, get the word out on iterators. See, it's all just a little overwhelming because I say iterator like, 50,000 times in this talk. So um, one note, though, when you're using a directory iterator, 
if you don't have permission to the file, you will get an unexpected value exception. So be aware of that. Wrap it in a try catch. Uh, so how many people are on 5.3 or greater? Who's on less than 5.3? That's hurtful. It really is. All right. Oh, I know. I, I, I was there at one point. I'm still on 5.3. I'd love to be on 5.5. Five. My personal projects are, but not my full-time gig. Anyways, so if you're on 5.3, uh, definitely uh, use the file system iterator. Uh, one of the simple things, that, the simple differences is it has uh, skip dots is on by default. So with the directory iterator, you actually have to go is dot to check, because if the output's going to be dot, 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 and then the files. And if you try to do something on one of those, it's not really a file. So file system iterator by default skips all the dots so you don't have to do those random checks. It's just saving you a little bit. And file system actually extends the directory iterator right there. So if you're on 5.3 or greater, use file system iterator over directory iter iterator. The glob iterator. How many people have actually used like glob outside of an iterator? Well, there, there, there is a glob iterator, which is uh, pretty helpful. I can just do libs and star and just list out a bunch of files. I could also uh, put star.php if I only wanted just, just the .php files. So like I said, it's, uh, it's quick and dirty. The one thing about uh, glob is there is no, uh, well, I guess it kind of makes sense, but there's no recursive iterator for the glob. So that's one thing to keep in mind. And then we move on to the recursive tree iterator. This one really, I struggle to find much, many uses besides just uh, CLI type stuff. But if you just uh, do the directory tree iterator, it automatically formats and outputs it like that. So you can actually see the structure of certain folders. So I can see where that's helpful for uh, command line apps. I don't know how many other options. Maybe I'm just not creative enough to come up with a good idea. But I tried. So um, with the, uh, the tree iterator, you actually have the uh, option to change what some of these symbols are. So you could actually change the prefix left, the prefix right, and change it to be whatever type format you want. So if you, could, if you had some special type of pattern that you needed, you could use that to just automatically implement it. Seems, seems kind of cool, I guess. But once again, only time I've ever used the tree iterator is just for CLI stuff. Yeah. Yes, me and, uh, me and somebody else tried to do it that way, but it was like one, it's, um, it was somewhere at the end that it was giving us issues, like there was one that we couldn't override. So, yeah, believe me, I, my menu idea, I was like, oh, this is perfect. Oh, there's one little thing that didn't work and it had to be changed in the core to actually make it work. So that's why I, I wish it could work out that way, but it just never did. So probably my uh, second favorite thing in iterators is the filter iterator. This is one of those outer wrapper iterators. It will actually filter out stuff without you having to do much of anything. So a common problem, I have all these version control uh, folders. And I just, you know, when I list out my directory, I don't, I don't want to see any .svn. Or if I'm in the root, I don't want to see a .git folder. I don't want, I don't want you to even mess with that. So. Right here, we create a filter iterator. So the only thing you have to do with a filter iterator is define the accept method. Return true if you accept this, or false if you don't accept it. So if, uh, if a version control folder does, uh, is in there, return false, and it won't show up. So pretty much, I would just uh, I'd wrap a directory iterator with this no DCS iterator. and if I uh, for each of that, it would never show up. So you can, it makes it really easy to uh, filter out data within, you know, and it's reusable. You can, you know, put, as long as it's an iterator that's going inside of this uh, uh, filter iterator, you're covered. So let's say I need to see all the images that are greater than five megs. This is just another example of using the filter iterator. I have my image types. So it's kind of like a whitelist. 
And then I'm just checking on the current. So this is the current uh, element that we're working on in our iteration. Checking the extension because we have an SPL file info. Is it a safe image? Is the size greater than five megs? Okay, cool, return it. And that's essentially what it would look like right there. I have my direct reiterator that's passed into my large image filter. So it's something that you could easily reuse and you know continually wrap to you know combine and do some really cool things. So uh, one thing to uh, make note that you need to actually, if you're wanting to count something, you need to uh, you need to count the inner iterator to get the. Uh, you can't like a, a limit iter or I'm sorry, a filter iterator. If you try to put a count on the outside of that, it's going to return you one. If you you have to go in and get the inner iterator and do a, run a count on that if you actually want to get the count. That's just something that I trip some people up when they were dealing with iterators, so thought it might be worth mentioning. So the regex iterator. Uh, essentially we have split, replace, match, match all, or all matches. And so pretty much it's just like using a uh, preg match, or yeah, uh, and uh, in PHP, but it's built into an iterator. So right here, I have my array iterator of test one, test two, test three. Have my expression set right here. And I'm saying, hey, I want you to uh, do a replace here. And then you define the property replacement. And then when I iterate over it, the output would be one colon test, two colon test, three colon test. So you could, e and the, thing, the, the great thing is, I'm not, I'm not destroying my original content. My original content is still the same. I'm just wrapping it in this uh, regex iterator that is just changing the output when we iterate over it. So the parent iterator. So I, di I didn't want to like uh, really go too in depth on this one because the iterator actually makes sense. It's a filter iterator that only accepts elements that have children. That's parent iterator. It, it's a parent of children. Okay, makes sense. Moving on. So the uh, limit iterator. So a lot of people are thinking, hey, I'll just use the limit iterator instead of doing my, uh, my MySQL limit and offsets. Please don't do that. Please don't do that. Still use that. There's other cases where this makes sense. Not replacing your limit and offset in MySQL, that's not what this is made for. So uh, in this one case, I had uh, uh, a feed coming in. And I didn't, like, they didn't offer me the control to say, hey, only give me this, this many records. No, they just sent it, sent it all and then left it up for me to decide what to do with it. So just like doing any kind of pagination type stuff, I get my current page, how many I want per page, get the result offset, and then there's my data for the iterator. So we have our iterator our offset, and how many we want per page. And even if I got 50 back, it's only once I do the four each, it's only going to output 10, and it's done. Now, if you try to like go beyond, like how many uh, how many pages or how many offset, like if your offset's past where it needs to be, you're going to get an out of bounds exception. So that's something to keep in mind. So. Once again, this is what I used it for. I had a Zen feed for RSS, and I was just doing a limit iterator. I just wanted five five records. So it's pretty easy. So how, how many people are on 5.4? More hand raising, I know. Um, so in 5.4, they introduced the uh, callback filter iterator. We, we love our anonymous functions now. Um, the one thing I want to say about the callback filter area, it's great. It's all it is is you can now use an anonymous function instead of having to like like extend a class and change the accept method. I want you to be careful when doing this because it, it's not, you know, you if this is something that you're gonna reuse a lot, you know, maybe it probably should be its own class. It shouldn't be in just an anonymous function and accept. 
you know, I, I worry about testability a little bit too. So it's cool where you don't actually have to create a whole new class if you just want to quickly do a filter, but just be cautious. So I need to find all the files that contain the word recursive, but don't want to create a new class to extend it. So right here we just have our uh, glob iterator. So I just want PHP files, but I only want PHP files that actually have, and yes, I know I could have used the, reg the regex for this one, but pretty much. So every file that actually has the word recursive in the file. So recursive files, those are the two files that came back from a list of files I had in the directory. So you have your iterator, so this is the glob, all the directory information I need. And then right here is my anonymous function. So the first uh, parameter is going to be current. It's going to be the current element. The next one is the key. And the third one is the actual iterator. So the actual filter iterator that you're, that's going to be running this. Yes, no, no, it's actually the glob iterator, sorry. So onto the caching iterator. So th this iterator kind of confused me for a long while because the way it acts is not really like a caching iterator, at least in my opinion. Maybe I'm just not seeing the light on this one. Uh, I like to refer to it as a look ahead iterator. So uh, it's, a, it's an outer iterator. So let me, uh, like I said, when we get to the example, it'll make a little more sense. So the, case, the use case I found for, for it that made kind of sense is uh, like a previous and next type navigation. So I have a caching iterator, and then I have an array iterator of animals. So I just have an array iterator of a bunch of different named animals. So if I board dump on the, uh, the current element, I'm going to get null. If I uh, do a get inner, iter, get inner iterator current, I get cat. So what it's done is it's, it's, uh, it's essentially uh, already uh, started the iteration on a, uh, or it's moved, uh, moved the inner iterator to next, and the other one's at the current state. So when I actually iterate over this, I can actually say, hey, my current, one, current animal is this. My next one is going to be that. So collection, get inner iterator, current. So the inner iterator is always going to be one step ahead of where your current is for that iterator. So right here, I have current cat, next is dog. Dog, next is elephant. Elephant, next is tiger, etc. And then once it gets down to the end, and the uh, has next fails, just says shark. So that's why I like to refer to it as a look ahead iterator in comparison to a caching iterator. But once again, maybe it's just a misconception for me. All right, more hand raising. Five five. All right. So five five inter introduced uh, generators. So a generator is an iterator that you can't uh, you can't instantiate. And once again, once you see the syntax, you'll see how easy it is. So a generator makes using iterators so much easier. So you remember that first slide where I, that not first slide, the slide where I show you all the methods you have to create every time you want to create your own iterator. That's a, that's a, lot, of, a lot of boilerplate stuff that you have to create there. You know, wouldn't it be easier if I just did just a regular function and just passed in yield? And this is an iterator now. It's a generator. But right here, this, this yield keyword Doing that, we've created a generator. So the, the thing about it is when we do a for each over this, over this get lines, it's going to output line. And then it essentially like this, uh, but how, how does it know to get back right where it was, where the cursor was, you know, if it's going to run it again? Well, it, it essentially is uh, saving the state of this uh, of this actual generator into memory, I guess. Yeah, saving saving the state so you can so it knows where to keep moving from. So yield. So let's get a better understanding of how yield works. So I create my function easy as ABC. I do yield one, yield two, yield three. 
And if I actually do a for each, that's just what it's going to hit. It's going to do yield one, it's going to do yield two, and it's going to do yield three. Because it knows in the state of which, which yield am I at right now. And when once it's done, it, you know, it's over. And that's all you got to do for a generator. So if you want to end the, end the generator, like just like, all right, I'm at a point where something isn't what I want or I found what I need and I just want it to stop, you just got to do return. So right here you see I do yield one, return, and it stopped. So it only outputted the number one. Don't put a value in your return or bad things will happen. So if you put any value in the return, you're going to cause a PHP fatal error. So if you're wanting to end your, your uh, generator, you want the iteration to stop, just use just the return um, itself, nothing afterwards. So testing iterators, or this is why I, I call them testing iterators. So you have an empty iterator. If you try to access the current, it's going to throw you an exception. Like I said, I haven't found a good useful use case besides just using it for tests. Uh, the infinite iterator, it continuously runs. It never stops. It auto rewinds at the end every time. It just keeps going over and over and over and over again. So we have some iterator functions. Like uh, you, you probably saw me talk about the iterator to array. Um, like I said, it, it takes the iterator and actually outputs it down to an array. Uh, one thing to re remember, though, if uh, you're doing a recursive iterator, it will uh, flatten your array. So be aware of that. Yes? Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to... I, is it weak, Keel? I know iterator to array has a, the next property allows you to tell it to rekey, but I, oh, I have to double check it. I, off, off the top of my head, I don't remember, but that is a good question. Uh, iterator apply is uh, just an array walk, just with a iterator. And then obviously we have the iterator count for anything that doesn't actually implement countable. So we kind of blew through that, but uh, anyone have any questions, concerns? Is everyone just you know fogged over from all the iterator iterators? I don't. I I don't know if they're still iterating over there. I I so my idea for uh, I mean kind of shifting off here. My idea for uh, for the recursive iterator iterator is so as of five three you could ha you have these anonymous functions. The begin children and end children, they do nothing. You have to extend the class to actually take advantage of them. There are hooks that get run, there's empty, there's no parameter, there's nothing there. So why not allow me to pass in an anonymous function so I don't actually have to extend it and do all this other stuff and create my little hook recursive iterator iterator. Just allow me to pass that anonymous function and say, hey, when it begin children happens, please run this uh, anonymous function. When end children happens, run this anonymous function. I think that would be helpful. Um, I was told by somebody that that would require a whole new uh, iterator, and I was like, if that's the case, I'm out. That just no. That, that's no. We're 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 hitting that limit of iterators. Uh, but with five five and generators, it's I mean it's opening up a whole new whole new world with the generators. And so, any other questions? Everybody's iterated out. So uh, if you didn't uh, get the bit.ly bundle link, uh, like I said, I always show it again. All right, we've got one. Uh, once again, join the link. Even though this is in my bit.ly bundle, I still put it up on the screen. So uh, with that, thank you.